Hey everyone, today is Saturday, July 20th, 2024. Uh, this is going to be your market snapshot for this week. So we're going to start off looking at the ES futures. Uh, we're looking at a four hour chart here. Um, we're going all the way back to January is what we're primarily looking at here. And we're just going to compare this last move up and pull back to the current one. And we can see on the last one here, we actually rode this trend all the way up. Once we broke below the trend here, we actually came down and bounced on this 200 moving average here for a day or two, a couple of days, before actually breaking down and going lower. And if we want to move forward to our current trend, uh, that's pretty much what we're doing again. Uh, we stayed within this same trend channel here, um, starting in roughly the middle of April, all the way up to today. Uh, we've actually just broken below it here by a considerable amount. Uh, the 200 moving average here on this four hour chart, it's just right below us. Um, so if we want to know, you know, maybe some price levels, uh, what to look for, possibly how much farther we could pull back if we do continue pulling back. Um, it is possible that we may just bounce off of it, kind of like we did right here. Um, that is a possibility. But if we do actually pull back farther, uh, what we can do is actually look at uh, a Fibonacci retracement. And I've already got those drawn here. So if we look at the Fibonacci retracement here, we can see we have actually already drawn uh, retrace back to roughly the 23% level. Uh, if we pull back to the 38% level, we're at 5431. And if we go all the way to the 50% level, we're at 5342. Um, and you can see also the 60 and the 78, and then the full retracement is back to, you know, about 4900 right here. And if we want to kind of compare, you know, how that looks to the last trend, let me just go to default here roll back and I'll actually show you how you can draw that in your chart if you're unfamiliar. So I'm just going to find this low right here. We'll right click and add drawing. We're going to do the Fibonacci retracement. Click that. And then we're going to just choose the high, which is going to be right in about here. And we can see we actually came down to roughly the 50 and then just barely touched the 61% area. So, you know, we had a retracement of roughly 50% uh, on this last trend we had. So, you know, I, I would at least maybe look for something like that to continue. Um, and, you know, sometimes we actually retrace much farther than that. But that maybe will at least give you some levels to look at. And that actually shows you how you can draw that on your chart yourself. And if we want to look at this on a one hour chart, just to kind of see the same type of trend that's been happening, let me turn those drawings back on so we can see we're pretty much right at that 21 percent level and you know here's your, your 38 and your 50 percent level and our trend lines you know these are the trend lines that i had drawn we can see we actually came down thursday kind of traded right on it and then broke below it on thursday or on friday i'm sorry So now if we want to compare what the market has done last week, we can see that actually the IWM actually finished up 1% uh, higher this week, uh, whereas the SPY was down 2% and the Qs were down 4%, about 4.25% actually. So it looks like just a rotation of money from the large caps into basically just the small cap stocks. So as far as news for next week, uh, we don't really have anything happening on Monday or Tuesday, so that's a good thing. Um, Wednesday, we have PMI. FOMC members are speaking here, but they're li listed as low. But, you know, sometimes they do say stuff that spooks the market. We have unemployment on Thursday and then Fridays. Looks like the core price index here. So we just need to look out for those things. Um, and then we do have, once again, we're in earnings season here. I mentioned that last week. So Tesla and Google are on Tuesday. You have Coke. Um, but. Earnings season is starting up, and these make pretty good products to uh, sell cash secure puts on uh, after the earnings has released. Normally, I like to go out maybe about 60 or so, 70 days, somewhere in that range, to sell cash secure puts. Um, I don't like selling cash secure puts on things that are about to have an earnings announcement because normally if you get into it before then, even though the premiums are high before earnings, if, if there's a bad announcement and they drop you know, 20 30%, that can happen. 
it's happened before. So a lot of people kind of learn that the hard way. So I try to avoid earnings when I'm doing a cash secure put trade. And speaking of cash secure puts, we'll look, look at our list here. So first we'll look at the ETFs. This is 2% out of the money, uh, July 26th. So this should actually be next Friday, which is six days to expiration. And this is just in a list of ETFs here. Um, should be able to get a little bit more premium here because the implied volatility has actually increased a little bit. And then if we want to go over to the weeklies, um, if this is your first time watching this, uh, this is basically stocks in the S&P 500 that offer weekly options expirations. Um, I have them listed in alphabetical order right here. So you have your put strike listed right here. We have the return on capital listed right here, as well as the return on capital annualized listed right here. This is 2% out of the money, um, six days to expiration. We have the delta of the option listed right here. So we have the RSI, which tells you if we're overbought or oversold. Uh, normally above 70 is considered overbought and below 30 is considered oversold. We have the IV percentile listed right here. Uh, we have an earnings listed right here. So this is actually going to be um, trading days and not calendar days. So this one day away um, is going to be, actually be Monday probably. So that lets me know if I see anything that's less than 30 days, I try to avoid it unless I'm trying to play something really close. But I always try to avoid earnings. So I want to take a moment and mention that this file here is available actually to, uh, for free to all the Patreon subscribers. Um, and this file connects directly with Thinkorswim. So this data will actually update during the day uh, when the market is open and we'll stream in new data so this all this stuff will update um, as the market changes during the day and another sheet that i don't really use often um, when i'm making these videos but i do use a lot during the day is the one labeled high and low right here and this is all of those same uh, s p 500 stocks that offer weekly options um, but i have it basically listed into two separate groups of columns here and what i like to do is actually sort this from high to low uh, on the left side and then on the right side I sort it from low to high and what this will do is then it's going to tell us you know all the stocks that are um, gaining today versus all the stocks that are losing today so I can come in and I can see exactly what the worst performers are in the S&P 500 and as well as all of the best performers in the S&P 500 so I just wanted to take a moment and just kind of, I guess, let people know that, you know, these files that you see me using um, are available in the, uh, for the Patreon members. But that's all I have for you today. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and bye.